Hey, what's going on everybody? J-Mac here. So I just did a level 71 greater rift with zombie bears with a little bit different of a variation that I think may potentially catch on and be the new meta for the witch doctor. And that is swapping the furnace in the cube for the selenium, which critical hits have a 4% chance to spawn a health globe. And then from there, running gruesome feast instead of either bad medicine or pierce the veil and from what i've seen especially with really dense rifts where you're critting a lot you're able to keep five stacks of gruesome feast a lot of the time and it also gives you uh, a lot of healing potential so you're getting a ton of damage out of this you're getting all resist out of it as well it scales very well with paragon level so the higher the paragon the more you're going to benefit you're going to get and pretty much at any given time, there's a couple health globes out so that you can kind of jaunt through mobs and pick them up and heal up, which in previous builds of zombie bears, there were definitely a lot of times where I felt like I would get low on life and have no way to recover that life. And this build just seems extremely strong, and it's just really, really tanky also. It honestly feels a little bit more tanky than even running bad medicine. Also, uh... In my attempts tonight, it seemed like Blizzard may have done some sort of tweaking because there was pretty much no lag whatsoever, which was pretty crazy. So let's go ahead and quickly get into all of the spec and the gear and optimization and all that good stuff. It's really not much different, although you do want to work on your secondaries on gear a bit, which we'll go over here in just a second. So spec-wise, it's really pretty much the same otherwise. Zombie Charger, Zombie Bears, Prox, Focus, and Restraint. It's one of your main damage dealing abilities. The Mimics cast these as well, and it gets buffed by Helltooth. Corpse Spiders, Blazing Spiders gives you mana back, and procs the other half of Focus and Restraint. Soul Harvest gives you Intelligence. It gives you an armor boost and slows enemies. This is really there for the 30% armor more than anything else. You want to make sure you're spamming this pretty much every time it's off cooldown. Spirit Walk Jot for movement speed and to dodge nasty stuff on the ground. Wall of Death Firewall, this stacks with itself, so the more of these you cast in one area, the better. And you pretty much want to cast this whenever it's off cooldown, and also the Grim Reaper Mimics will cast this. Piranha's Paranado to pull things together and get a little bit of a damage buff, and the Mimics will cast this as well to pull things together for you at times. Grave Injustice, mostly for the cooldown reduction than anything else, but you get life and mana back as well. The Gruesome Feast, which we already discussed. And then Spirit Vessel for a second life. Swampland Attunement for uh, just a ton of toughness. Again, this does not buff uh, your resistances to lightning or arcane. So keep that in mind when you see an arcane beams or orbitals, thunderstorm, electrified, stuff like that. And then the fifth passive on the Hellfire Amulet is Confidence Ritual for 25% additional damage. The enemies within 20 yards. So as far as the gear goes, it's really pretty standard as to what, you know, I've gone over a lot in my zombie bear builds. But something you want to look out for as a secondary is extra life from picking up health globes. You probably want two or three of these rolls as secondaries, potentially. And then pickup radius is even more important. I mean, it's already really important with Grave Injustice and Swampland Attunement. You really want 8 to 12 pickup radius. I have 8 currently. And I feel like two more pickup radius would really, really be great in the build so that you don't have to move quite as far and uh, you can optimize your uptime on your DPS opposed to moving to pick up health globes. So as far as the rest of the gear goes and optimize rolls, on the scrimshaw you want percentage damage, intelligence, vitality, and then the zombie charger damage that always rolls. You're going to Ramalandis it to put a socket with a crit damage gem. You got the Henry's Perquisition. This allows you to really move through the rifts and look for high density areas and pull mobs together without getting one shot. That's why you run this over the thing of the deep. And you want Intelligence, Vitality, Crit Chance, and Wall of Death damage. On the Helltooth Greaves, Int, Vit, Armor, and Zombie Charger damage. On the Helltooth Legs, Int, Vit, Armor. Build Transcendence, Intelligence, Vitality, Life Percentage, and Armor. On the Helltooth Tunic, Int, Vit, and Wall of Death damage. Helltooth Mask, Intelligence, Vitality, Crit Chance, and then a Life Percentage Gem. 
Helltooth Mantle, Intelligence Vitality, Wall of Death damage, and then you can go CDR, you can go Area Damage, or you can go for a defensive stat like Life Percentage or Armor in that slot. As far as Helltooth Gauntlets, Intelligence, Vitality, Crit Damage, Crit Chance. You get your Focus and Restraint, both with Int, Crit Damage, Crit Chance, and a Socket. You see those. The Jerem's Bracers with Fire Percentage, Intelligence, Vitality, and Crit Chance. And then the Helltooth Amulet with Int, Crit Damage, Crit Chance, and a Socket. As far as Legendary Gems, our two offensive gems are Bane of the Trapped, which pretty much is going to be proccing itself when you're in melee range, but it also gets procced by the Necrosis debuff, which slows enemies. And then Bane of the Stricken, which is really there for the single target damage on Rift Guardians. From time to time, it comes into play in other scenarios, but it's really there for that Rift Guardian kill. Especially in this setup, not running the Furnace in the cube, you're gonna Bane of the Stricken really does some serious work for you. And as far as like what bosses you're looking for, you probably are gonna want to actually get ones that have adds. Even though Bane of the Stricken isn't as good against ones that have adds, things like Saxtrus have potential to give you five stacks of Gruesome Feast the entire fight. So I have to mess around and see which bosses I like the best. I haven't fought a lot of them yet with this setup, but I'm thinking bosses like that may be the best, potentially. And then one Defensive Gym Esoteric Alteration. Uh, this is really there for the secondary effect, getting 75% increase to your resistances when uh, you're below half-life. The, the first effect obviously is great, but that second effect really, really makes this gym shine. You could also run Molten Wildebeest Gizzard, but I think with the extra healing in this build, with the health globe pickup and all the health globes you're generating, I think this is the best one. As far as the cube goes, again the Selenium, Grin Reaper, so the Mimics are going to be doing a ton of damage for us, casting the majority of our offensive skills, and then the Convention of Elements, which... In this build, will be dealing fire and poison damage. And you really want to make sure you maximize your spamming of zombie bears while this is rotated around to poison if you can. And for the most part, you should be able to set it up so that you're kind of casting your firewalls uh, right before this rotates around to the poison. And you want to make sure that you have both focus and restraint buffs up before it rotates around as well if you can. Paragon wise, get as much movement speed as you need and then go intelligence. Potentially, if you're really having some issues staying alive or you're just your, t your toughness or your life is really low, you can put some vitality in here as well. Offense wise, crit chance, crit damage, CDR, then attack speed. Defense, armor percentage, life percentage, all resist, life regen. And then utility wise, area damage, resource cost reduction, life on hit, and gold find. Honestly, with this setup, you're not going to have any mana problems with the Gruesome Feast in the build and how many health globes are dropping. And it's really, really nice because you can just kind of spam Perinado at this point. Whereas before, even with running Blazing Spiders, you couldn't cast Perinado whenever you wanted to and still have mana for zombie bears. So uh, this is a really nice change and one of the kind of nice side benefits to running the Selenium and Gruesome Feast in general. Next up, and something you guys have really been asking about, is your follower setup. Now, prior to this build with the Selenium, I was running the Templar for the healing and the mana regen. But again, with Gruesome Feast, you don't need the mana regen. And you're getting so much healing from the health globes, especially if you have extra health globe uh, life on your gear as secondaries. I think the Enchantress is definitely the way to go. And as far as gear-wise, you definitely want the cannot die token and then weapon wise you can either go thunder fury or the unjang do if you're going to go unjang do you need to roll the cold damage to lightning damage to then proc the word ward and then an oculus ring so potentially if she does kill an enemy you get a boost in damage and then the s of johan to pull mobs together as far as the build for the first skill charm and then Powered Armor, I like. Gives you 3% armor and slows enemies. You could also go for the damage reduction from ranged attacks if you like that better. I think the armor is better in my opinion. Erosion for 3% increased damage. 
and then mass control for a nice hex ability. So there you go guys, I hope the build works out well for you. I'll tell you what, this has made zombie bears even more enjoyable to play, and it really has some great killing potential for high health white mobs while still having a ton of damage for the elites as you go through the rift. You probably still want to skip most champion packs. The only weakness that it has compared to the old furnace build is that it just doesn't kill the rift guardians quite as fast but everything else is much faster and overall i feel tankier even than running bad medicine from the probably 20 to 25 rifts that i've done so far i pretty much went from struggling with level 70 rifts with the old build and barely doing one to almost getting a 71 within the first couple tries uh, with this setup so I definitely think this is the way to go. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with my level 71 clear. It was an extremely GG Silver Spire Rift. The only thing that wasn't GG about it is the boss was bad. It's one of those bosses that moves around a bunch, so you can't really optimize your DPS. And I did not get a conduit. But otherwise, absolutely insane density and really easy mob types. So, really hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do... Don't forget to like and subscribe as always, and I'll see you guys next time.